Hello. I am going to show you how to do some cool physics stuff using lists. And, and so this is kind of like not just physics, it's more like art. And so I'm going to sh I've already made a video about how to use lists in Python. Uh, now I'm going to use that for something creative. And I'm going to start with projectile motion. So I'll, I'll include a link down below to actually there'll be two things. One is my previous video on lists and my second video will be how to do projectile motion. So I'm going to start, let's just do projectile motion in Python. And this is not actually Python, this is uh, GlowScript v Python. And so what that means is that uh, this is uh, in a web page. I'm using trinket.io, but you can go to glowscript.org. Uh, and it has all these cool built-in things like vectors and 3D objects. So let's just start with the following case. I'm going to say g, I'm going to start off with uh, a variable g equals vector. 0, negative 9.8, 0. I'm going to use that. That's my acceleration. I'm now, I, I'm taking some shortcuts here. Okay, I'm not doing this as the full way of calculating the forces. I'm just going to assume that if I throw a ball and it has a velocity, its acceleration in the vertical direction is negative, is g, not negative g, that the negative is in the y component. And then I can just use that to update the velocity. So the first thing I need is the velocity. Let's say v0 equals 5, 5 meters per second. And I'm going to say that I'm going to throw this at an angle of 35 degrees. So, and I want to get this without list working first. So uh, I'm going to say theta equals 35, but I need that in radians. So I'm going to multiply by pi, divide by 180. Now I'm going to uh, make an object. So I'm going to say ball equals sphere. And, and when, sphere is a built-in object in Python. And when I do that, I can give it a location, I can give it a radius, I can give it other properties too. So let's just build this out. I've done this before, so I'm going fast. Uh, I'm going to put it at the origin, so vector 0, 0, 0. We can move this later. I give it a radius of, let's say, 0 0.01, 0 0.05. Uh, I'm going to leave it as no color, so it would be like gray. Uh, and I will give it this, make trail equals true. Now I need to give, that's the position of the ball, so let's just print, let's just run this. So there's my ball. Now one of the things that you'll notice is that, uh, and I can rotate it, I can zoom in and out, just 3D environment. Uh, one of the things you're going to notice is that Python's going to zoom in to make it fill up as much of the screen as possible, and we'll deal with that in a little bit later. And then I can do this, print ball.pos. This is the vector position of the ball. We're going to need this later uh, and you can see the value of it. Right down here it will be 0, 0, 0. So that looks like it's working. Yay! Now I need to give it an initial velocity. So I'm going to say ball... What the heck? I'm going to say ball... Oh, I did it again. Ball... Ball... Dot v. I can add this prop, this pr uh, this property of an object, the the velocity. I'm just called ball dot v, and the velocity is going to be v zero times the vector cosine theta sine theta zero. So cosine theta is the x component. So when I take this, uh, and I'll, let's print this out. So cosine theta is going to times v0 is going to give me my x component of the velocity. Sine theta times v0 is going to give me my y velocity. So there you go right there. And I can change those and everything will work out great. Uh, but there, there it is. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to say, so it starts at y equals 0. I'm going to say while ball, and this is not the list stuff, ball.pos.y, the y position is greater than or equal to 0. And I didn't make a ground or anything like that. Do the following. Oh, I need this. T equals 0. DT equals 0 0.01. So I, I'm going to, the key thing here is to use a short time step. And during that time step, update the velocity and update the position of the ball. And then keep doing that again and again and again. So if I want to display the motion of this ball, I need to tell Python how fast to do this. Rate 100 says, since I have a time step of 1 100th of a second, a rate of 100 says don't do more than 100 loops per second. And that will make this look in real time. 
And you can change it. You don't have to run it in real time. You can do whatever you want. The first thing I'm going to do is to update the velocity of the ball. So ball.v equals ball.v plus g times dt. And, and again, this is just a, an Euler method numerical calculation. I'll, uh, the video I have down below explains this in more detail. But I really want to use this to make lists. I want to, don't want to talk about projectile motion. Now I need to update the position. Ball.pos equals ball.p. Ooh, you got to spell it. Ball.pos plus ball.v times dt. Update the time. t equals t plus dt. That should work. Let's see what happens. There we go. So I launched the ball. There's no ground, but it, it went up in the air and it came back down. Everything's everything's great. If I want to, I could change this to uh, 55 degree angle just for fun. Okay, so we have this whole idea of a launch ball working. So that's really good. Now what I want to do is to make 10 balls at 10 different angles all launched together. And, and we can see what happens. It's going to be it's going to be beautiful. Okay, so instead of making a ball, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm going to make a list of balls. So I'm going to say balls is a list. It's an empty list. There's nothing there. And what I want to do is go through and add items to the, I want to add spheres to the ball list. And then I'll have a whole bunch of balls. Instead of having ball one, ball two, ball three, it's just all going to be in a list. So the first thing I want to do is say n equals 10. I want to know how many balls are in my list. And uh, I want to add my balls in the list. I want to launch them all at the same velocity, but at different angles. So I'm going to say theta equals zero. And this, it doesn't matter if you put this up here. Uh, theta equals zero for the first ball. And then I'm going to increase them by, I'm going to want, I want all the balls launch an angle from zero to pi over two. So I need, uh, what's my theta step? I'm going to go through and add a, a new angle. Well, if I have 10, if I have 10 balls, I want to each step to be one tenth of pi over two. That sounds weird. D theta equals pi divided by two times n. So that means that all my that we evenly distributed from zero to two pi. Okay. Now let's build the the ball list. So I'm going to say four i in range in. I can't do for i in balls because there's no there's nothing there. I want to range in makes a list of n items. So it goes from 0 to 9. And now I can I can add items to the list. So I'm going to say balls equals balls plus an item. And in that item I'm going to put a sphere. So I'm going to say sphere I'm going to give it a position. Uh, let's put it as equal to vector 0, 0, 0. And then I can give it a radius. Each ball has to have a radius. 0, 0 oops, not negative, equals 0 0.05. Uh, I, do, I do want to give it, an, I want to go ahead and say what that velocity is. I can make a sphere up here when I made that ball. If I took that off, I could instead of doing this line I could just put v equals all that stuff up in when I declare the ball that's fine so I'm going to do that now I'm going to say v equals vector equals v0 times vector cosine theta let's return this Co v equals v cosine theta sine theta zero and that's my velocity uh, i do want one other thing let's turn on the make trail make trail equals true okay so then i added a ball to the list now i want to add another ball to the list and and but before i get to that i want to increase theta so i'm going to say theta equals theta plus d theta and that will make my ball list um, Okay, let's get rid of this. Let's, let's comment all this. This won't work the way I have it right now. And I want to just test if this list is working. So I'm going to say, uh, let's just print out one of them. So let's say print balls 
three, four dot V. I'm going to print the, the, this is the fifth ball on the list. I want to print its velocity. And let's just see what that looks like. And just to make sure it's kind of working. And there it goes. There's my, there's my fifth ball velocity. So it does seem like they all have, they're all there and they're all working. Uh, and it did make a ball, right? Because uh, I'm adding balls in there. So they're all, they're all, all those balls are right there. They're just on top of each other. Okay, now I want to make uh, a, I want to do the, the model. So let's do this. Let's do the same thing. And I'm going to change this to uh, while, cause it, I can't, I can't do it while the ball is greater than zero because they're all going to be different. So let's just do it for a certain amount of time. So I'm going to say while for one second, while t is less than one. And then I can turn off this. And then these just, I don't need these. Well, I'm going to change this. Okay, let's do this. So now I want to go through each ball on that list. And I'm going to update its velocity and update its position. So let's say four ball in balls. Right? So there, that's my other way of tra traversing a list. Now ball is going to be ball one, then ball two, then ball three, and so forth. And now I can actually just write ball.v equals ball.v plus g times gt, and ball.pos equals ball.pos plus ball.v times dt. Yeah. And that's going to go through and just update every single ball. And that's it, right? Now I just need to update time. I don't need these anymore because it looks the same. But in this case, ball is one of those items in the list. I think this will actually work. Uh, and we'll fix it in just a second. Let's, let's run this because there's going to be a problem. Let's run it. I don't know why it's slow. I mean, come on. That's just beautiful. Now, what I, what I don't want, what I want to do, let's just fix this a little bit. So I want them to all stop at uh, y equals zero. So let's just go down here and add something in. Um, so what I'm going to do is if I'm going to have another statement, if the ball so say if, no wait, I want that right here. If ball.pos.y, if the y position is less than zero, then I want to stop it. So the first thing I'm going to do is stop it. So I'm going to say uh, ball.v equals vector 0, 0, 0. And I also want to move it back to y equals 0. So ball.pos.y equals 0. Now let's run it. Check that out. Okay, now I do want to do one thing. I want to move this uh, over here to the left. Um, I don't even know how far that is. Let's just put this uh, starting position of the ball at negative one in the x value when I make them. That'll shift everything over. You could, there's other ways to fix this, but I'm so lazy I don't really care. Okay, that looks a little bit better. I'm pretty, and, and this is 3D. Look, it's 3D. Check that out. Now wait, I'm not done. Because, oh, what if I want to do. 50 balls. There's no difference. All I have to do is change this to 50 and run it again. Wow. That is artistic. Look at that. I mean, that's not physics. That's art. I love it. Isn't that cool? Okay. So I think that, that I did have another projectile motion problem I wanted to do uh, with lists. But I think, I think I'll add that as a third video just because I know you guys keep liking videos. Uh, so, And I'll include the code. So I'm going to include three things in this video. And I'm reminding myself right now. Number one, I'm going to include a link to my previous video on creating lists in Python. Number two, a tutorial on making projectile motion in vPython. And number three, the code right here. Okay. So you can play with the code, and I think that you should. And I'll talk to you later.